on to the uh, Honeywell Flour Mills PLC, which declared revenue of 33 billion naira and profit after tax of 1.7 billion naira for the third quarter, which ended December 31st, 2012. Now, this uh, uh, represents a 0.3% rise in profit after tax. And here in the studio to discuss the company results is Tunde Odunaya, who is the managing director of Honeywell Flour Mills. So really good. it's really good to have you in the studio. Thank, Thank you, you so much, much for coming. Um, now let's take a look at your your uh, results. We've seen revenue go up by 18% from 28 billion to 33 billion. What are the driving forces behind this increase? Well, I'll start from uh, the uh, <coughs> output. We have had uh, an increase in output. Of course, you know that in uh, the last quarter uh, we uh, had an increase because of the new mills which were opened. So we have new volume coming out of our mills. But very importantly, you know, wheat cost has been rising. And because of the rising wheat cost, we had to take up uh, the price of flour. Also, we had duty impacting uh, the 15% levy, which impacted on our cost. We had to take up the price of flour. So you have, uh, it's, it's mainly um, volume and then uh, flour price. I see. Now, you've also declared pretty flat profit after tax figures. So why hasn't this increase in the revenue fully filtered down to the bottom line? We've had an increase in revenue, which was basically to take care of the rising costs. Wheat costs went up dramatically by uh, about 60%. Duty on wheat also went up because of the 50% levy, levy by government. So um, that has impacted really on the, on the profitability. But we also had volume increase because we had the new mill uh, operating just about a month ago. Yeah. I see. And um, you mentioned your uh, a new mill facility. How has this contributed so far to your existing operations? So far, this new mill facility was opened about a month ago. The output is already showing, but we expect that before the, by the end of the uh, financial year, we will have had um, it in full implementation. And some of the highly profitable products like uh, Honeywell Semolina, Honeywell Wheat Mill, would have been in the market in abundance. So we expect uh, a major shift in profitability by the end of the year. I see. I mean, I was just about to ask you the, the effect that you feel that this will have on your future earnings. We should expect that by March, there will be a more significant increase in profitability by March. But I can't tell you by how much because, you know, these figures have to be cleared first with the stock exchange. Of course. Are there any plans to introduce any more products? Um, I think we want to give the market an abundance of what we have in stock in the meantime. Uh, big production is coming. Don't forget that our capacity is going up by 67% by this uh, new made expansion. So there's a lot for us to give to the market. Let's give that to the market. Let the market absorb it and enjoy it. They've been waiting for these new products, uh, this uh, increasing capacity. So once we've done that and we're happy with the result, then we give, uh, we tell about the new products, okay. but then the pipeline. Okay, now uh, I want to look at the activities of some of your competitors and how um, those activities have impa impacted your company strategy. For example, we've seen uh, Dangote Flower recently being acquired by the um, South African group Tiger Brands. What effect do you think that this will have on, you, on your strategy? For Tiger Brands and Dangote, we sit and we are watching. Um, but we do know of Tiger Brands that they have a lot of products that are of grocery type. Um, Nigeria is not that of a grocery market, if you know what I mean. Uh, we eat from uh, fresh foods. We don't eat from cans and tins. So that's something they will have to struggle with. We have no concern as, at all that that's going to affect our business, no. I see. And uh, also, uh, let's take a look at, obviously last year we had uh, the, uh, fall subsidy, uh, the fall subsidy reduction, and um, that has impacted a lot on disposable incomes. Um, how has that affected sales of your products? Perhaps that will have affected the luxury products. You know, for us, we supply food to the table masses. People eat first before they worry about luxury products. So we still sell, we have good volume. And also, please remember that um, for our category, our products are in the premium position in terms of preference by the consumers. So we're in a pretty good shape. We're not affected by any withdrawal of subsidy at all, not at all. 
Okay, now I want to talk a bit about your share price quickly. Um, we've seen a year-to-date uh, increase of 47%, which is obviously pretty good. Um, some people may feel that uh, uh, share price is overvalued and some, some may feel that it's been fairly valued. Uh, what are your takes on it? What's your opinion? I think that the market is still trying to find its feet uh, or trying to find its level. Um, since 2008, the market has been uh, going down, 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 and recently up, down, up, down. It still hasn't found its level because the investment climate is still not very, very clear. Um, people bring money from Europe, from the U.S., just to take advantage of what exists here, but they're not very, they're not long-term investors. So all the ins and outs by foreign investors is giving a push and a pull on share prices. But we do know that Honeywell Flamel's uh, share prices grossly and very, very grossly undervalued.